years of tomorrow india's only daily television platform for small businesses over the past seven years we've understood what matters most to you the entrepreneur and in year eight we're taking head on two of your most pressing concerns that of funding and mentoring i'm sunanda jay seelan on the show tonight a very special conversation with badabusiness.com on the other side of a break is kerns and pepins first interview tonight is with someone who takes entrepreneurs those who want to become entrepreneurs but don't have the skill sets or the knowledge of how to and turns them into successful entrepreneurs i caught up with vivek bindra the founder of badabusiness.com who transforms businesses through courses on sales on hr branding marketing etc and turns small businesses into big successful ones how does he do that listen in for yourself dr bindra such a pleasure having you here in our studios Uh, on this master class for entrepreneurs and we talk very often about what are the different things that small businesses require one thing that we perhaps don't talk about often enough is the role that you know mentoring really plays when it comes to small businesses before we come to that and talk about your hugely successful business and your hugely successful youtube channel my first question to you is to talk about your business for those of our viewers who may be wondering what is it that makes vivek bindra tick what would you have to tell them See, uh, as a founder and CEO of a company called Bada Business dot com, mm -hmm. Bada is a Hindi word and business is an English word. So we are helping the Hindi audience. People sometimes don't understand that the Hindi audience, Hindi content is consumed twelve times more than English content. So our company, our organization, the identity is simple. एक आम आदमी को एक वांटर प्रोन्योर जिसकी इच्छा है मैं जिंदगी में बड़ा करूं. We are building hopes in our country. We are building dreams in our country. Or affordable education. गैप कहाँ पे था अवर कंट्री इज नॉट एबल टू कंज्यूम द नंबर ऑफ इंजीनियर्स एंड एम बी एज प्रोड्यूस्ड सो दे आर प्रोड्यूस्ड मोर देन दे आर कंज्यूम्ड और वो चैलेंज जो है अंडर एम्प्लॉयमेंट इज अ बिगर प्रॉब्लम देन अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट सो टू मैनेज दैट गैप कि आज टीयर टू टीयर थ्री ऑडियंस जो है दे रियली वॉन्ट जब वन आई डू अ बाउंस बैक इवेंट वन आई डू अ मोटिवेशनल सेमिनार एंड टीयर टू टीयर थ्री सिटी तो उसमें ज्यादा ट्रैफिक होता है पीपल कम दे वॉन्ट टू मैडली दे नीड सम वन हू कैन एक्चुअली हेल्प दैम तो वहां टिकट जल्दी सोल्ड आउट हो जाती है छोटे शहर में और बड़े शहर दिल्ली मुंबई करें तो ठीक है लोग बिजी हैं दे नो फ्यू थिंग्स बिकॉज देर आर ऑल्टरनेट अवेलेबल फॉर देम बट स्मॉलर सिटीज देर इज नो ऑल्टरनेट so that's what we thought let's not do programs in english we started doing and delivering our content in hindi and we've actually built a ecosystem of lot of billionaire professors with us who will actually teach them kiran majumdar show now she is an iconic lady and she is our trainer acharya balkrishna fmcg mendin entrepreneur and he is a great professor who comes physically live event mein aate hain manu jain jisne 32% market share acquire kar liya handset industry mein jahan 500 brands struggle kar rahe hain aur 20 bade brands struggle kar rahe hain wahan pe manu jain is are also a regular professor shaumi se so got a long list so that's what we thought ki hum kuch industry veterans kuch aise leaders ko lekar ke aaye jisne 1 billion 2 billion 5 billion dollar ka business establish kiya hai Okay, fantastic. Before we come and talk about your professors, I do want to talk about your YouTube, YouTube channel. Uh, officially, I understand now the largest in the world when it comes to the number of views that you get. How's that been possible? You know, how do you drive traffic? What's the the, the secret sauce, if I can call it that, behind that? See, secret sauce is very simple. We don't put volume of content. We put only quality content. Okay. We want to build solid loyalty. for our consumer consumer doesn't have time he doesn't need too many things he need that specifically your customer will not buy your product when he needs it sure. he'll only buy your product when he urgently needs it so you have to make sure kab usko urgently exactly kya chahiye so our strategy is obsession towards consumer advantage to humne kya kiya content mein teen hisse samjhe ek content as content दूसरा कंटेंट में प्रेजेंटेशन कितना बढ़िया बोलते हैं कितना हाई एनर्जी से बोलते हैं और तीसरा है उसका पोस्ट प्रोडक्शन जो एनिमेशन ग्राफिक्स है तो ये तीनों का बड़ा इंपॉर्टेंट रोल है कंटेंट में दम होना चाहिए प्रेजेंटर में दम होना चाहिए पोस्ट प्रोडक्शन में दम होना चाहिए सो वॉट इज आर सक्सेस इज आर एवरेज वीडियो हिट रेट इज ह्यूज इफ यू लुक एट अदर बिजनेस चैनल्स हु आर टीचिंग ऑन्टरप्रन्योरशिप ऑल्सो दे मे बी प्रोड्यूसिंग वॉल्यूम ऑफ कॉन्टेंट बट दे डोंट बिल्ड ट्रैफिक दे नॉट एबल टू जनरेट ट्रैफिक सो वाई वी वी वॉन्ट आर कॉन्टेंट टू बिकम ऑक्सीजन फॉर आर ऑन्टरप्रन्योर इन आर कंट्री तो हम ऐसा कॉन्टेंट देना चाहते हैं जो थी आई टेल यू समथिंग हम एक्सेल नहीं सिखा रहे 
ہم ان کو سکھا رہے ہیں ایم آئی ایس فار بزنس کہ وہ کیسے ایم آئی ایس کی رپورٹ بنائے اور بزنس کو اپنے گرو کر سکے ہم اس کو پاور پوائنٹ پریزنٹیشن نہیں سکھا رہے ہم نے کورس بنایا ہے اسپائز اسمارٹ پریزنٹیشن فار انویسٹر کسٹمر اینڈ ایمپلائیز سو ہم نے کیا کیا اپلیکیشن بیسڈ کانٹینٹ بلڈ کرنا شروع کیا دیٹ ایف یو نیو آنٹرپرینیور اینڈ یو وانٹ ٹو یو ڈونٹ ہیو منی اینڈ یو اسٹل وانٹ ٹو جنریٹ ٹریفک پہلا ایک ہزار کسٹمر آئے کیسے میرا کوشچن ہے ایک ہزار کسٹمر کیسے ملے سو دیٹس واٹ تو ہم نے کورسز کو چینج کر دیا اس کا اورینٹیشن بالکل بدل دیا وہ اورینٹیشن چینج ہوتے کورس جہاں پہ ہم لوگ ٹیکنالوجی ٹولس سکھا رہے تھے پر وہ ٹیکنالوجی ٹولس کے کورس کا ہم نے نام کر دیا بزنس آٹومیشن بزنس ٹو بزنس گلا چھوڑو کیمپین سو نندا دا کورس از گلا چھوڑو کیمپین واٹ ڈز دس مین کہ جتنا جلدی گلا چھوڑ کر کے وہ اپنے بزنس کو آٹومیٹ کر سکے اور وہاں سے بہت ٹریفک ملا ہمیں اتنا ویورس کو پسند آیا اتنا کانٹینٹ انہوں نے کنزیوم کیا Fantastic. Uh, Kiran Mazumda show that you were talking about is someone that, who comes very frequently on the leaders of tomorrow. Fantastic story that she has, personal story as one of India's better known entrepreneurs. Uh, who are some of the other mentors? You also mentioned Manu Jain. Uh, and why is it essential perhaps to have each of these you know, professors or lecturers or mentors really who come on board your channel? Look, in Indian FMCG, mein, number one is Patanjali, so we've taken Acharya Balakrishna as our professor. Dairy products, mein, number one we feel is Amul, 50,000 crore ka turnover, we've taken Mr. R.S. Sodhi, who's the chairman managing director as our professor. Mm-hmm. Mohanda Spai, who we've made a professor with us, Keki Mystery, HDFC, we all know that, we've made a professor with us. So we've taken a lot, like Ken Taro, Aro, mein, number one, we've made a chairman with us, Dr. Arvin Lal, pathology, mein, number one, we've made a professor with us. So in this industry, mein, jo bhi number one, we've thought that if we can actually get them on boarded as professor and they can add that value who real genuine solid experiential content thing which will take them beyond all IMs and all MBAs but it has to be most affordable uh, can I give you a good news mm. we are teaching this at 750 rupees per month okay um, you teach something called uh, or rather you know you, your your course is branded as you know going from being a entrepreneur to an entrepreneur the one thing that it takes Uh, in your mind for someone who says I want to be there to actually becoming an entrepreneur so maybe I'll tell five things mm-hmm. the first four most important which is most important is the product mm-hmm. if your product if you can build it in such a way that it can solve the burning problem of your customer and your customer should have no option against your product that your product becomes oxygen it becomes compulsion not option mm-hmm. So then you'll be able to grow fast. You can get the first mover advantage, early profits, high margins, sub mil jayega. Second important thing is scale. Now for scale, you need to have four things. My business should grow sustainably, profitably without my presence. If you have these four things, you can scale up. So two things I've mentioned. First is product, yeah. second is scale. scale. Third, which is very important, is super solid talented manpower your manpower can make you super power so build a great super solid high performance team so fourth point here is can you build a platform instead of building a project mm. project is transactional mal do paisa lo platform is where there is a continuity where there are multiple stakeholders involved youtube kya hai platform hi to hai mm. content creator aa raha hai content consumer aa raha hai sare stakeholders hai advertiser bhi hai youtube khud bhi hai if you look at all great organizations in the world they're building great platforms mm. So coming back again, fourth point is, can you build a platform where unconnected people get connected and they do multi-sided transaction without your presence and you make money out of that? Sure. Fifth is an amazing point. Can you build a recurring revenue model in your business? Sure. If there's a recurring revenue model, which means the lifetime value of your customer. If you're building a business where there's a huge lifetime value of a customer, then Even if you've got to spend money, you'll be able to recover all that money. Okay. So five important things I shared, important business lessons. If somebody can take care of them, he'll do really well. Uh, that will help him build great competitive advantage, strong, solid entry barriers. Uh, fantastic. My last question to you then. One piece of advice that you have received in your long career uh, as a very successful entrepreneur yourself and as a first-time entrepreneur, One piece of advice that you've received, what do you think has perhaps helped you in this journey? Manu Jain gave me a beautiful advice, who is also a professor from Xiaomi. He said, data is going to be the new currency. Mm-hmm. Build your own data, build your own customers, create your platform so that that data can actually help you later on retarget, remarket and build recurring revenue in future. Mm-hmm. So I liked that idea very much. And he said that um, uh, the reasons why Amazons and Flipkart have done so well and they've become such most valued organization because they're able to actually capture the data and based on the user interest later on retarget and remarket and build a better 
you know, long-term relationships. Like I said, LTVC, long-term value of customer. So uh, these are all great professors. They can sure. teach massive content when they're coming to our events. Uh, thousands of people are coming and they're actually able to bring a solid J-curve in their businesses. Okay. It's been a fantastic conversation. Thanks very much for your time, Dr. Bindra. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks. Let's slip into a short break. On that note, when we come back, Delhi-based Ferns and Petals tells us what it takes to be the market leader in their space. Do stay tuned. Welcome back. You're with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow and tonight our second influencer is with Ferns and Petals. Thank you very much for joining us here on this uh, conversation talking about the floral and the gifting market. I want to start uh, by talking to you about the fact that uh, your business was set up 25 years ago. One small shop is what I understand. What's that journey been like? Sure. Thank you for having me, Isunanda. Uh, Ferns and Petals was founded by Vikas Gurgutia in 1994. We started with a single flower shop in Delhi and we realized the way flowers were being sold on footpath and we shifted the entire business into an air-conditioned uh, flower showroom. And since then it really took off when the first shop started making money, we opened a second and the third shop. By the time people in Delhi caught on to the various unique innovation designs which we were selling and they said, Ki, hey, can we also open a Ferns and Petals outlet in the city? And that's how franchising started for us. Uh, post a couple of years, say around 2000, before that we also started putting up flowers on weddings. Since we were doing uh, a very different way of presentation of flowers, uh, we were very good at doing wedding flowers in all the wedding functions. And uh, in somewhere around 2002 is when we started our online portal. And let me remind you, these are the days wherein uh, Google search did not really exist. And uh, that is when the first online order which we got from our website and our uniqueness was in terms of delivering flowers anywhere in the city, anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world. Uh, post which we realized uh, the wedding business is also growing up huge and we started putting up fixed wedding venues and we also increased our capability in terms of end-to-end -end event management and we could do the entire wedding uh, anywhere in the India abroad. Followed which was we realized that the online, so fundamentally we have three verticals, the, f the retail vertical wherein we have somewhere around uh, 400 plus flower and cake shops. Then we also have the online vertical. We are India's biggest flower gifting portal, uh, gifting portal per se. And also we are one of India's biggest wedding organizers in Delhi NCR and also across the country. So now we have also expanded not just in India, but we have uh, two operations running one in UAE in Dubai and in Singapore. Both the operations are uh, doing very well and we are uh, one of the top players in both the markets. That's been an overall history of uh, Funds and Petals so far. You've recently entered, I understand, the FMCG business by launching your own brand of mineral water under the FNP brand. Why was that necessary? And really, you know, talk to us about that move, talk to us about that market. Water expansion was more or less our natural extension of the business which we were in. We are doing a lot of weddings and we had a huge in-house consumption of water requirements. So water which we provided not only was available in our wedding venues, which are more than 10, 12 in Delhi NCR, there was a huge consumption there. Plus also our 80 cake shops is where we felt key water can be consumed. And uh, this is how we, we started the water expansion. We are also trying to put in a unique packaging in terms of the size of the, uh, the water bottle and also the designing aspect of it. We talk very often about uh, franchising and, you know, franchisees here on the Leaders of Tomorrow. Your products, your flowers, I understand, are sourced from suppliers all over the country. So my question is on how you really maintain the quality of your products. So we have two uh, franchise verticals, one being the flower shops, of course. So we are somewhere around uh, 300 plus flower shops in across approximately 125 cities. Now in terms of ensuring that the quality and the uniformity remains the same, we ensure that everything which is being sold in a flower shop is supplied from a centralized warehouse in various parts of the country. So 
whatever other than perishable is supplied from a centralized warehouse and we also train the manpower the carigars the malis who are working in these outlets at our centralized location in delhi and thereafter they go to those respective cities and produce the funds and petals effect in terms of uh, producing a bouquet or uh, any other kind of presentation similarly in cake we have a centralized training facility in delhi and we also have a central kitchen wherein our chefs are trained and they are ensured that the fast moving items the regular items and the innovation products uh, they are fully trained to replicate the same taste the recipe and this is how the cake franchising is also taking place we are very particular and uh, finicky about the quality the presentation the taste as to whatever we are selling online offline both Two years ago, I understand you opened your 300th retail store at a time when everyone is talking about the online market or at least an O2O model, the online to offline model. Uh, you know, talk to us about your focus, your business strategy when it comes to opening more and more retail stores and having you know physical stores. And what's the reasoning behind that? Okay, so for us, uh, fortunately, we are into a very, very fine and uh, equally complementing format. Our online orders, whenever a customer is searching for flower online delivery, he sees an ad of ferns and petals and he recalls that he has seen that outlet somewhere in his market. So he has more trust in terms of placing that order. The moment that order is placed, it is it is transferred uh, through a software to the nearest closest outlet of ferns and petals which is closest to the recipient address and we go and deliver from the, that particular outlet which as I explained already is trained in terms of doing what exactly is what we show online. So it's a beautiful complementing model wherein the offline provides brand visibility, execution uh, for the online and online is able to provide orders and business to the offline segment. So that becomes a self-sustaining venture and where they are profitable within six months of uh, an opening of a shop. As we're winding down this interview, I do want to talk about the biggest opportunities when it comes to your uh, market and your industry and also the biggest challenges. Okay. So the biggest opportunity here is uh, we have just crashed the surface. When I see the the entire uh, country growing, when I see the uh, humongous, uh, the size of scale of business which is available across uh, in North America or across the world, wherein there are billion dollar businesses just for gifting and similarly for weddings, the opportunity here is endless. So it's uh, in terms of expansion into various other categories, not just into flowers, but uh, the personalized expression of uh, your uh, own happiness which you want to convey to the recipient. So the opportunities here uh, is uh, in, in category, in uh, geography, in not just in India, but also abroad. These are the various uh, opportunities I see. And when we talk about challenges, it's... Uh, I would say that uh, the vision is the challenge as to how much do you want to expand and how do you ensure the uniformity of what you are committing to a customer is getting delivered on the ground. So these are the, the two, two particular opportunities and challenges I can think about. Okay, let's uh, wrap this interview up by asking you to talk about you know, what future growth plans and what time frame that you can share with us when it comes to this. So the three verticals which we are talking about uh, in terms of retail and online, if I were to put that together, I would say that the entire flower gifting market per se would be somewhere around maybe 5,000 odd crores and we would be somewhere around uh, 500 odd crores in terms of doing what we are today in the coming year. And uh, in, uh, in, the, in the wedding segment, it's, it's a very open-ended uh, business. It's not just in, since we are based out of Delhi NCR, the weddings happening across the world, we have heard figures of some crazy numbers of 50,000 crore or maybe a couple of lakh crores. So the opportunities here are uh, endless in terms of go going forward. How do we expand in various other geographies? And uh, what all can we do is our imagination is the limit. All right, Pawan, we leave it at that. Thanks for your time here on the show. Thank you, Sulanda. Thank you for having me. As we're winding down tonight's show, I do want to talk about something that we here at Leaders of Tomorrow are very excited by, and that's our association with Odap, the most trusted name when it comes to anything to do with startups, future trends, evaluation, as well as growth, etc. This once a week capsule brings you all the most incisive information that you need to know about the startup ecosystem tonight, leaving you with a closer look at Ahmedabad. <music> This week, we are bringing you an in-depth look into the Ahmedabad market across all sectors. 
attract annual investment across all sectors in Ahmedabad in the year 2016 stood at $146.54 million. 2017 saw tracked annual investment at $293.11 million. In the year 2018, it stood at $152.33 million. In 2019, it stood at $336.61 million. And finally, in 2020, it stood at $310.61 million. Let's now take a look at company launches by year. In 2016, it stood at 94. The next year, it stood at 42. In 2018, at 49, in 2019 at 13 and finally in 2020 it stood at 1. Our final graphic takes a look at startups by funding stage for 2020. 49% were seed funded, 6% were series A funded, 13% series B funded, 4% were series C funded and 29% were others. That's a wrap up of our location snapshot for this week. We will continue to bring you the most in-depth content on the startup space week after week right here on Leaders of Tomorrow.